favorite day of the week. Let's sing to the Lord this morning. He's so good. turn let's sing it out
Go down one way and come up redeemed this morning. Oh, he's good. Peter, we know that with just one touch of your mighty hand that you have healed the sick, you have raised the dead, and we know the power of your redeeming love, and we thank you.
Water holds the power of life and death. Without it, you cannot survive. Too much of it destroys. Early in the human story, water cleansed the earth of evil and wickedness. Only Noah and his family remained dry. Years later, an infant Moses placed in a basket is saved from death in the Nile River. Moses remains dry. And again, Moses leads his people across dry land. Just before the Red Sea crashes over Pharaoh and his armies. In this water, we find death. Our separation from God. Then Jesus comes. He does not avoid the water. He is immersed in it with us, baptized with humanity. He emerges with a new life, a new self, a new identity, and invites us to do the same. Water holds the power of life and death. Today, we choose life. As we continue to sing, if you'd like to stand, you're more than welcome to praise the Father, praise the Son. Here we go. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit.
Father, praise the Son, let me hear you. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King. the baptism service at the Journey Camp this summer, the middle school and high school kids. We had a lot of kids that were baptized uh, this uh, summer at that camp. Today, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is our Baptism Sunday. So glad to see all of you guys here this morning. Um, before we get started into baptism, I've got a couple questions I want to ask you. Is Have you ever thought about what your last words would be uh, before you, you go on to, to heaven? Um, what would be your last instructions? It'd have to be something pretty important, right? Um, there's a lot of people that write their last will and testament because these are important instructions, instructions that you want your loved ones to know. Things like, uh, here's a list of personal contacts of people that you need to get in contact with. Here's some business contacts of people that you need to get in contact with. Um, let me tell you where I store my legal documents. Let me tell you where I store my username and passwords of the computer. Um, here's the information for my outstanding debts you need to be aware of. Um, and here's my specific plans for funeral arrangements, right? They're just specific things that are very important that you want to make sure those instructions are carried out uh, before you leave this earth. This week, I was listening to his radio, and uh, there was someone who, who, who gave instructions that for $285,000, that they needed someone to take care of their cats after they passed away. And if they would pay $285,000 um, to the humane shelter and take care of the cats, they would get a, a free three-bedroom, two-bath house. 
to take care of. Those were, those were what I call special instructions, right? That was on his radio. When I think of special instructions, I think of uh, something that happened with me personally with Pastor Robbie. He was the pastor of Low Country Community Church prior to me. Um, he was my mentor um, who got sick suddenly uh, on a Sunday afternoon and died on Wednesday. And I remember going to the hospital and visiting with him um, just hoping that he was just going to pour something very special, uh, something that I could take with me forever and ever and ever. And we got in there and the doctor was in there talking and, and, um, and tells Pastor Robbie that they're going to give him some pro- propofol, which is uh, it's a, it's a drug that uh, is good for general anesthesia, right? And I remember when he, he, they're setting up his IV, getting ready, they said, we're going we're gonna to put this propofol in there. And Pastor Robbie said, is that the stuff they gave to Michael Jackson before he passed away? And the doctor said, yes, it is, but we're going to monitor you and everything is going to be okay. And he goes, okay, good. So then he calls me over closer to the bed because he wanted to tell me something. And in my brain, I'm like, he's getting ready to say something to me that's going to be life-changing because he wanted to give me some instructions on what to do the following Sunday if he wasn't at church. And so what we didn't know is propofol works pretty quick. And so he pulls me close and they started that IV and he went, he, he, Billy Jean is not my lover. <laughs> that was the last instruction from my mentor before he passed away um, on Wednesday. But for most of us, we don't know when our last day is gonna be, right? We don't know, but... Jesus knew his last day. He knew that he was ascending up to heaven and he was very specific with his final instructions before going to heaven. As a matter of fact, we talked about it last week, right? He said, go and make disciples, baptize them and teach them. That's the great commission, right? Go therefore make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age, right? It was about making disciples. And how do we become disciples? We become disciples of Jesus when we believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. When we believe he was God in the flesh and we believe that he died for our sins and that he rose from the dead and has the power to forgive your sins, and grant you eternal life. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now here's something that you need to know and you need to understand about sin. We are all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God, right? We all fall short. And for the wages of sin is death. Now, Christ followers, I want you to listen to me. In your circle of influence, you're gonna have people that are not Christ followers. And so when you tell them that the wages of sin is death and we all are sinners, My past experience is when I'm talking to a a non-believer about all of us being sinners, what they're actually hearing is they're hearing me say, you're a sinner and I'm better than you. Hear me out. Those watching online today and those that are in this room, we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God and we all need a savior to save us from our sins. Praise the Lord that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. That son is Jesus Christ. He gave his life on the cross for you, for eternal life. All of us. And I'm just telling you that because like I said, from past experience before, people get offended and they get upset. Oh, you think you're high and mighty because you're a Christian and you're calling me a sinner. Well, I'm I'm calling myself a sinner as well. You may not know this, but pastors are sinners too. We are all sinners, we all fall short, and we all are in need of a Savior. And we put our faith in Him, and we are saved by that faith. First, we hear the gospel of Jesus, then we have to believe the gospel of Jesus, and then we trust in Him. And when we put our faith and our hope and our trust in Jesus, that involves repenting or turning away from our sin and calling on the name of the Lord. Are you all with me so far? Okay, so today is Baptism Sunday. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to see some men and women today do just that. They're publicly going to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior by immersing themselves in this tub of water up front here, proclaiming outwardly the inward change that has taken place in their heart. So today what I want to do when we're talking about baptism, I want to share with you the how and the who and the when and the why we should all be baptized. But before we get there, I want to talk about the water. See, this looks like a table right here, but it's not. It's a trough that we borrowed from our friends down at Discover Church in Surfside, and it's filled up with water. And so when the praise team got here this morning, we had all these hoes running into it. We had a pump in there and we had a heater. Somebody say, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, right? Because I tell you, the ones that are going to get in this water are going to go, praise the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, amen. But we had all these hoses running in here, getting everything ready. And I, I shared with the praise team that, hey, right before service, we're going to disconnect everything so it will be clearer for us to stand up here. And Addie, who, who is the nice little lady that sat here, stood here on this side and sang, she goes, well, I have a question. What makes that water so special? And I go, what do you mean? She goes, what makes it baptism water? What a great question that is. Because this is how we get caught in religion. This is why we do communion differently from other churches. I'm not knocking any church of their way of doing communion. But here's what I've learned. I've learned as a human, okay, I'm talking about myself, I'm, all of us, as a human, we are more apt to start worshiping the act than the person that we should be worshiping altogether. If you go to Israel, we're going to Israel in January. When you go to Israel, there's two different places that they believe that where, where Jesus was buried. And they don't know for sure. It was either over here or over here of what they think. It could have been a place that they don't even know of. But when you go, there's one place that I believe it just kind of feels right of where it is, but there's another place. So which one is it? Here's the deal. We don't know. And I, I'm kind of glad we don't know because if we knew exactly where it was that Jesus was buried, we would worship that place rather than worshiping the father himself. I talked weeks ago about we start praying and start wishing and start asking for all these miracles and we start getting so caught up in the miracle itself, we forget about the miracle worker, right? So it brings me back to this water. This water is not a magic potion. It's water. It's water. And, and what this water does, it's a symbol. It's a symbolism of Jesus' death his burial, and then his resurrection. We come up out of the water to a newness of life. There's nothing special about the water. It's just a symbol. Do everybody understand that? Because a lot of times we, we, just, we just get caught up in that and we start, we start thinking more about this than the reason of why we do this. It's the same way with communion. See, with communion, we get caught up in, in the elements of communion and we forget about why we're doing it to begin with. Because he gave his life for each and every one of us. That's why we do it. So here's what I wanna to say today about baptism. I, I have a prayer. If you've not been baptized before, I, I would like for you to prayerfully consider making today the day that you make a public proclamation that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And let me just say this, you don't have a towel, we got one for you. You don't have a shirt, hello, we got one for you. You didn't bring a change of pants, you're on your own right there. Yeah. We're doing it at the end of the service so you won't be wet for too long, right? You'll dry. Oh, but Pastor Steve, I would really like to be baptized, but see, I brought people with me today, and so that's just going to be kind of weird if I get baptized with them. Let me just tell you something. If you brought a guest today who is a Christ follower, you know what their prayer is for you? That you would prob uh, publicly confess that. So if you brought somebody with you today, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let them see you get baptized today. So there's some questions that I want to answer real quick that, that people have asked me a lot, and that is, is baptism needed for salvation, and is baptism needed to go to heaven? Those are two great questions. The answer is no. 
Baptism is not needed for salvation. It's not needed to go to heaven. But Paul, Paul, he says this way, right? He says, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. The preaching of the gospel. It's the gospel that gives us the salvation, knowing what Jesus Christ did for us, right? Not with cleverness of speech so that the cross of Christ would not be made no effect. He lays out the whole go- the gospel that brings salvation in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, now I make known to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel which I preach to you, which you also received, in which you also stand, by which you are also saved, if you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed down to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ, look, there it is, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. That is our salvation is we have a savior that gave his life so that we may have life. Okay, but, but if if I don't need baptism for heaven or for salvation, then why is getting wet for Jesus so important in our Christian walk? Why why must we do that? Well, here's some reasons that I found that I want to share with you. And the first reason reason is this, is it follows the example that Jesus Christ himself set out for us. He gave us an example. And if you go to Matthew chapter three, verse 13 through 15, it tells us that he arrives from Galilee to the Jordan River, right? John is baptizing in the Jordan River. By the way, if you ever want to go to Israel with us, we baptize in the Jordan River. John tried to, yes, it is cold, is it not? Yes. It's a lot colder than what's in here. Let me tell you that. John tried to prevent him saying, listen, I've got the need to be baptized by you, but you're coming to baptize me. Jesus answering said to him, allow it at this time for in this way, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. It's an example. Jesus gives us an example. Paul tells us to be imitators of me as I am in Christ, right? We are are to be Christ-like. We are to imitate Christ in all that he does. If it was good enough for Jesus to be baptized, I'm getting baptized. He gave us an example. Here's the other thing I want you to see. It symbolizes our association with Jesus. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, we're associating with him. In Romans chapter six, verse three and four, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we've been buried with him through baptism into death so that just like Christ, as he was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, so we too may be walking in a newness of life. So what we're doing is we're associating ourselves with Jesus. And today, that doesn't have uh, as strong of a meeting today as what it did back in Jesus' day. And, And let me tell you what I mean by that. Back in the days when Jesus walked the earth, if you associated with him, if you associated him as a follower of him, then there was a pretty good chance you were gonna lose some friends. There were some pretty good chances that you were gonna lose some family members. And for sure, you would lose status or you'd lose position or you'd lose your rep- reputation. You remember the story of Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, right? Who, who uh, was a high priest, man, who, who talked and talked and shared the word of God. Well, he went to go visit Jesus, but he did it under the cover of night because he didn't want his cover to be blown. If others saw him associated with Jesus, that's a big deal. And for most of us today, we, we, don't, we don't experience that. But, but some of us do. Some of us do. Listen, we, we, have, we, had, we had people the first service. We've got people in, in the second service that are getting baptized today that were Catholic. And some really people have a, have a struggle with the fact of, of walking into a church that's not a Catholic church that they'd be disowned by their families. I, I hear it all the time.
we associate. Baptism puts us in association with, with Jesus Christ. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're baptized in the Spirit. And that means the Holy Spirit comes and indwells in us. We're united with him and immersed in him. And the water baptism is a great picture, great picture of being associated with his death, with his burial, and his resurrection coming up out of the water. And that's why we baptize by immersion instead of sprinkling. Because immersion, right, is going down under the water. And sprinkling, if we sprinkle, that really doesn't do a good job of symbolizing the death, the burial, and the resurrection. The word baptize, when we see the word baptize, the Greek word is baptizo, which actually means, it's a literal sense, to immerse, to submerge, or to make overwhelmed, fully wet. So that's what what baptize actually means is to be submerged, right? To be immersed in water. So that's why we, we immerse, right? We go under the water because that's a representation of his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. And then her, here's the third reason why I want you to see why we should all be baptized is because it obeys the command of Jesus. And I know what you're thinking. You know, Steve, if you'd had that one first, we could have gone home by now. We could have started here. And then stopped. Because who, who wants to break a command of Christ, right? No. Uh, let, let me show you something in, in, in Acts chapter 2. Um, right after Jesus ascends to heaven, Peter, he preaches at Pentecost. And he says, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus' last commands, Right? was to go and teach and to go and baptize. Peter goes and does that. Remember, let's just remind you, he says, go make disciples, go baptize them, and go teach them. And if, if you haven't figured it out, just in case you haven't figured it out yet, at LC3, we're really passionate about that. We're really passionate about that. So let me talk about the who, like who should be, not the group, but the who should be <laughs> baptized. Here's who should be baptized. If you have made a, con a conscious decision, a conscious decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as the forgiver of your sins, and if you believe that he died, then he rose again, then your next step is baptism because you made that conscious decision, which is why we don't baptize infants because infants are unable to make that conscious decision. And I talked about that last week. And last week we had people who went, whoa, I was baptized as a baby and I thought that counted for something. Well, it does. <laughs> that was your mom and your dad professing faith, their faith. But if you haven't professed faith, then what are you waiting for? When we read the Bible, we only see those that were baptized. They made a conscious decision to receive Christ. L let me show you one example. It's in Acts chapter 8. Um, it's the, the Ethiopian eunuch, right? As they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, there's water. What prevents me from being baptized today? And he said, well, you ordered that the chariot to be stopped, and they both went down to the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. He made a conscious decision. So we don't do infant baptism. And if you were baptized as an infant, I'd like to challenge you today to publicly confess that. So what do we do? What do we do for children? What do we do for babies? Well, we do what we call our baby dedication. And I explained this last service, but this service, we, we have a, a living example of a baby dedication, because we've got the Carbone family with baby Liliana, we've got Brittany and Chris, that they're gonna make their way, if they would, y'all would come up here. And they're here with their family today. I think uh, parents, grandparents, right, that are here, and we're, we're glad that you're here. Y'all give them an LC3 welcome. In Psalms, in Psalms 127, verse 3, I don't know if I have that or not on the screen, but it says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord, the fruit of the womb, 
is a reward. So because children are a gift from God, it is natural that Christian parents and grandparents dedicate their child to God. In the Gospels, we see, we read where people are taking their babies and their small children to Jesus for Jesus to put their hands on, him, on them and, and, and to pray for them. And, and so that's what we do. And the same way here, we have Brittany and Chris. They bring their daughter, Liliana, um, first presenting themselves and then presenting Liliana before the Lord. Hello, sweet pumpkin. How are you? She's smiling at me right now. Um, yesterday when we met, she kind of cried when I went towards her. So I'm keeping my distance. <laughs> so, so Brittany and Chris, I want to call your attention to the commands of God recorded in Scripture. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 through 7, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up, right? You immerse yourself in God. In Proverbs chapter one, verse seven says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. What's that telling me? Telling me it's telling me that the best things that moms and dads can do is teach their child to fear the Lord. In other words, everything that Liliana learns starts and begins with her first learning to fear and follow God. So we, as a church body, we urge you to love God with every ounce of your fiber and to teach your daughter to do the exact same thing. And as you do this, you're going to be modeling for her a wonderful love for God that she's going to one day eventually want for herself. So, okay, let me go faster. By coming forward today before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and Liliana to the Lord? If so, respond by saying, we do. Okay. Having come freely, I now ask that you enter into the following commitment in the presence of God and his people so that Liliana may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow by God's help and in partnership with his church to provide Liliana a Christian home of love and peace and to raise her in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage her to one day trust Jesus as her savior and Lord? If so, respond by saying, we do. Finally, I'm going to ask the church if you guys would make a vow as well. As believers of the body of Christ, we have the responsibility to teach the gospel story to our younger generation. Does anybody ever understand that? It is our, no matter how old you are, it's your responsibility to teach the next generation. In fact, Old Testament prophet Joel commands us to tell God's work to your children and that your children tell it to their children and so on and so on and so forth, right? So here's my question that I'm going to direct to this congregation. Being present in God's house today, do you hereby declare yourselves to be the children of God because you trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins and eternal life? If this is true, quickly respond by saying, we do. Yeah. Awesome. Would you please stand? Everyone, please stand. And having come freely, I now ask that you make the following commitment before God and those who stand before you so that Liliana may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow by God's help to be faithful in your calling and members of this body to help this this beautiful company, couple raised this beautiful child. If so, respond by saying, we do. We do. They did. We do. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this couple. I thank you so much for this precious child. And I just pray that they follow in your steps, footsteps all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, all God's children said, amen. amen. You may be seated. There you go. <laughs> Here you go. I got something for you. There you go. God bless you. All right. Watch your step down there. <laughs> you, you just never know, right? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So that's a baby dedication, which is different from baptism. So let, let, me, let me go back to the, to the whys and the wheres and the whens and all this stuff. Why should we be baptized? Why should I be baptized today? Today you should be baptized because Jesus set us an example he gave the example and it symbolizes our association, our connection with him. See, here's the thing about our association with Jesus. When we associate with Jesus Christ, we should, we should be different when we're out in this world because we should be a light to this dark world. And then finally, Jesus commanded it. And if Jesus said so, then I'm doing it. 
So that brings me to the who. Who should be baptized? A person who's made a conscious decision to, re- to, reach Jesus, to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And how do I do that? By immersion in the way that symbolizes the spiritual reality of your death and resurrection in Jesus Christ, the way that word is actually translated today by immersion. So the most important question today is, okay, well then when? When should I do it? Now, all that stuff that's written up there, we can replace it with one word. Today. (laughs) When? When you repent of your sins and believe that Jesus Christ died for those sins and was resurrected to life. When you believe that, then today is your day. When your hope, when your faith and your trust belong to Christ, then today is your day. When you give your heart, when you belong to Jesus Christ, then that is today. I'm gonna go back to the day of Pentecost again. When the Holy Spirit first came and dwelt among the apostles and all the other believers, Peter stood up and he preached a sermon to the people. This is in Acts chapter two. He says, when they heard this, They were pierced to the heart. Peter is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're pierced to the heart. And they say to Peter and the rest of the apostles, what are we to do? And Peter said, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God will call himself. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on urging them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. And look at the final verse of this passage. It says, they, those who were baptized and received his word, they were baptized, and that day they were added about 3,000. It doesn't say this awesome, awesome message was pre- preached. They went home and they thought about it for a few days or a couple weeks and then came back to a baptism service. Nope. They received his word and they were baptized. When? That day. That day. And guys, we, we see this over and over in scripture, right? The Ethiopian eunuch, which I talked about just a moment ago, What's keeping me? I, I, I'm learning about Jesus. What's keeping me from being baptized today? Nothing. Let's get baptized. Cornelius, the first Gentile in Acts chapter 10, he, he was the first Gentile convert, baptized immediately. They believed and they were baptized. Water baptism happened normally immediately after a person believed. So let me just say this. If you're here today and, and, you, and you have believed in and you have received Jesus Christ as your savior and you haven't been baptized, then today should be your day. Today should be your day. If you're here today and you believe that you should be baptized and you haven't been because you've just been afraid to and something's been holding you back, I wanna encourage you to be strong, be courageous, and take that step of obedience to the Lord's command and be baptized today. Be obedient, because when you know that Jesus wants you to do something and you don't do it, that's disobedient, and disobedience is sin. So repent and be baptized today. If you're afraid of getting your clothes wet, they will dry. They will dry. And we have towels and we have a shirt. We, have a, we had a lady that came in this morning that was dressed beautifully that made the decision to be baptized. And you know what she said? My clothes will dry. This was more important. Now let me say this, if, if you're here today, however, and you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, well then, why don't you do that now? Why don't you do that today and then follow him in obedience to, to be baptized just like they did in the early church? The gospel of Jesus was preached and they were baptized. 
they accepted him and they were baptized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the praise team if they will start making their way forward. And while they're making their way forward, I want, to, I want us to pray to receive Christ. There's some people in this room today or maybe watching us online that have never received Christ as their Savior. And so today I want to give you the opportunity to pray to receive Christ today and then after that to come forward and be baptized. And this is what we're going to do. After I pray, after we pray that prayer, we're going to dim these lights down. We're going to show another video about baptism. And then after that, we're going to sing a praise and worship song. They're going to lead us in worship. So when the lights go down and the video rolls or, or the music begins, what I want you to do, if you prayed to receive Christ or if you're going to be baptized today, I want you to get up and I want you to make your way over here to where the cross is. There's Rick Gibbons that's standing there and he's going to lead you back through this door where we've got a team back there ready to receive you and to help you, to prepare you to be baptized this morning. It's the biggest decision that you ever make in your entire life is the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And whether you do this now or you've done this before, let's take that next step for baptism. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just come to you this morning so thankful for this wonderful day. What a great service we had um, earlier and what a great service we're having now. I just pray for each and every person here that if they have a thought of being baptized or perhaps they were baptized as an infant by the, by the proclamation of their, of, their, of their parents. And I pray that today is the day that they profess Jesus as Lord and Savior. But I stop now and I take a moment for those that have never accepted you as Lord and Savior. If that's you this morning and you're ready to accept him, ask him into your life, ask him into your heart. You can do that by, by just where you are, just repeating this prayer right after me with all eyes closed, all heads bowed. Just pray, dear Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I know that there's nothing that I can do. I can't work my way free from this sin. I need a savior and a Lord. And I believe, I believe in you. I believe that God sent you to give your life for my sins and to save me. And you died a horrible death on a cross. But three days later, you arose to defeat death so that I too can defeat death. And today I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. And today I want to publicly share that by this baptism of being immersed, being buried with you, and being resurrected to new life this morning. For every Christ follower that's out there this morning, man, I just pray that you will continue to pray for those around you that have not yet received Jesus is Lord and Savior, that they would be bold enough, brave enough to stand up and to come forward to be baptized today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have Peggy Lee Welch and Ron Kreckman and Don Deborah Real, who's made the decision today. I can tell you about Peggy, we're going to baptize Peggy first. She was raised Catholic. She's always believed in Jesus, but she never really knew him. She has since learned that it's not about a religion, but instead it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Peggy, come on up. Just going to ask you to step into the water. Is it nice and warm? Good. Oh, yeah, that's real nice. That is good. All right, I'm going to ask you to cross your hands and arms just like this. Peggy, do you profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior? I do. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations.
<laughs> That's why I brought a plastic protector. <laughs> hey, Ron, how are you? Y'all, this is Ron. He's better than usual. He's known Jesus all of his life, but today he wants to publicly reaffirm his faith that Jesus Christ is his Lord and his Savior. It is warm. There you go. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Yes, I do. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> there you are. Don Deborah. How are you this morning? Good. All right, I have to just sit down there. So, did you know this morning when you got ready that you were going to be baptized today? Was that on your thought, on your mind? No? No. But today you're deciding to publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Do you proclaim that in front of everyone? Yes, everyone. All right. <laughs> All right, I want you to cross your arms. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. All right. Awesome. So, that's awesome, y'all. It's a new beginning today. We do have a group of people that, that are about to begin this new beginning. And I just want to say again, um, there's still some time. If you didn't get up, if you want to make your way over there, Rick can and lead you back there to the back because we do have several people that are about to be baptized. And we're going to start with LC3, one of the most dedicated evangelists at LC3 Church. Um, always begins her conversation with her grandfather. Da uh, Grandpa, have you read your Bible today? Um, always inviting her teachers and classmates to come to church. She wants everyone to know Jesus. She's waited two whole years for today to be baptized, to publicly profess Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She has made that con uh, conscious decision to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. The first one we're baptizing is a Aubrey Abbott. If you'll come out, Aubrey. <laughs> How did I do? Did I say all that right? Did I say it right? Okay. All right. So you ready to get in? All right. One, two. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now you want to take a seat down there? You want to get on your knees? <laughs> Come up for air. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to slide. Let's slide back here. This a little bit there, right there. Perfect. All right. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. You are? All right. I'm going to ask you to cross your arms just like this. And just like we talked about yesterday. Do you, do you profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Your Savior? Yes? I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. All right, um, next we have Lisa uh, Langless. Lisa, she was raised Catholic, um, very regimented. Um, she's, lear uh, she's learned a lot, um, learned a lot about being in a relationship with Jesus, and today she wants to publicly profess Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. How are you? Water feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, no. <laughs> nice haircut. Thank yeah. you. You too. 
great conversations during baptism, right? Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mike, your turn, buddy. You ready? All right, we're going to come right in here. This is Mike. Um, Mike says that he feels like he's always known Jesus, but he's growing deeper in his faith and growing deeper into relationship with Jesus and wants to continue to grow deeper in this relationship with Jesus. All right. I'm going to lose some? Yeah. <laughs> And we should have made you last, huh? <laughs> that was the plan. That was the plan. Oh, yeah, you're right. We got plenty of water. Do you publicly profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, fix that. There we go. There we go. That's awesome. I got baptized. All right. <laughs> All right. Who do we have next? I think we have uh, Kara. Is it, is it Kara and Drew, right? Where's Kara? Oh, okay. <laughs> Kara has always known who Jesus was, but has learned to seek him. Through scripture. Oh, you're first? Yeah. You want to go first. All right. This is Drew. We know Drew a couple of weeks ago. He shared his testimony. He was a man that was lost without a purpose. He now has placed his faith in Christ and he has hope. He was baptized as a child, but today he comes forward to publicly profess Jesus as Lord as he continues to seek a deeper relationship with Jesus. The water awaits you. This is awesome. <laughs> With your whole family gathered around, how cool is that? Sorry, man. This just makes me cry. Let this be an example to each and every man out here. You are the spiritual leader of your household. And what he's doing today, professing Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior is an example to his wife and to his children. This is something that every single man in here should strive to do and strive to be, is that spiritual leader. Amen? Amen. Do you profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, Kara, it's your turn. She's always known who Jesus was, but she's learned to seek, his, seek him through scripture. As a result, her faith has grown stronger and she's developed a deeper relationship with him. She was baptized as a child, but today has made a conscious decision to be baptized by her own free will. Nice and warm still, yes? Okay. You just cross your arms. Do you profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? I, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Awesome. All right. I think we have some more, yes? This is Julie Anderton. How are you, Julie? I'm nervous. You're nervous? Yeah. All right, thank you. So this is kind of cool because I've known Julie for about 20 years now? 
Yeah. Ju- <laughs> yeah. Julie used to come to Legends in Concert whenever I worked there. It was Garth. I sang Friends in Low Places and sang the dance, and we danced together. And now, after Friends in Low Places, I'm going to baptize you today. How? <laughs> this is just, this is proof that God's got a great fun sense of humor, right? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask you to cross your arms. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. more? Hey, David. Y'all, this is David Larson. You come get in the water. David was here for the first service, and he came and he met with us afterwards, and he says, you know, I, I, uh, I think I want to be baptized, but I'm not quite sure. And if I'm ready or not. And I, and I asked him, well, why do you think that you're not ready? And he said, I don't know. And I go, well, why do you think you might be ready? And he said, well, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I said, you're ready, <laughs> right? I mean, we had a little bit longer conversation than that, but in a nutshell, that's kind of what it was about, right? All right, we have you step in the pool. It's uncomfortable with pants on? Yeah. Are those jeans? No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you'll slide forward just a little bit, I don't want to conk your head. All right, David, do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. Congratulations. All right. Anyone else? Three, three more after this. All right. All right. All right. We can help you. Uh oh, with your fracture. Okay. All right. I'm not the only one in jeans wet. That's great. This is Julie Erickson. She said she hadn't really planned on doing this today, but today is the day, right? So here we we have a whole service full of people. Do you publicly profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. Cross your arms for me, please. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You did it. Perfect. Yep. All right. It's Gianna. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> so, Jesus, uh, Gianna, tell me, why are you wanting to be baptized today? Because you love Jesus? Yes. All right, that's a good reason. Do you profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Yes. You do? All right, cross your arms. Yep, I'm going to hold you right here, and I'm going to uh, bend you down, okay? I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. Good job. Hello. Uh, hello. Oh, this is Coco, and this is Silas. Right? Are y'all married? No. Did y'all have the same? La- oh no. <laughs> <sighs> you, I was just wondering. You had the same last name. <laughs> you, that, is that your brother? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you want to go first? You want to go first? Come on, we can do that. 
All right, let me see if I can lift you up in there. Come on. All right, you want to sit on your knees for me? There you go. And why do you want to be baptized today? Do you love Jesus? Yeah? All right, oh, you want to cross your arms like this for me? All right. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, and so you're the big brother, huh? Yep, all right. Silas, tell me why you want to be baptized today. Because you love Jesus? All right. You follow Jesus? Do you know when you get baptized what you're going to do? Let's scoot up here just a little bit because I don't want to bang your head and back here in the back. There you go. All right. By being baptized today in front of us, see all those people out there? What you're doing is you're telling them that you love Jesus and that he is in your heart and he's living in your heart forever, right? All right, will you cross your arms for me? I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is San Sandra Anderton, and she is the mom of Julie Anderton, who was baptized today. <laughs> All right. Let's see. You, you don't need your purse where you're going, okay? Let me take this back. <laughs> it, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. You want to take your shoes off? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know I was coming right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to move these. You get this out of the way and just step in. Oh, nice and warm, isn't it? I'll, I'm invited. <laughs> All right, have a seat. All right, we're going to have you, can you scooch up this way a little bit? Because I don't want to bump your head back there in the back. Nothing will damage it. Nothing will damage it. <laughs> That's awesome. Can I share that with him? She's about to be 85 years old. That is so awesome. All right, so I'm going to ask you to, to cross your arms so I have something to hold on to. Kind of, there you go. I'm going to grab you. Oh, grab that. I gave mine to Julie. <laughs> just pull it. Just pull it. Yep. All right. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She said it's wet. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. And then we have Addie, I know. Where's Addie? We're going to go. Come on up here, Addie. We're going to go from 85. Addie, how old are you? You're 10. Addie wanted to be... She wanted to be baptized this morning with her mom and dad, but she was singing, and so she couldn't do that. There you are. You ready to get in? Addie, tell me why it's so important for you to be baptized today. Take your place with Jesus, and you decide that today is the day, huh? All right, that is awesome. All right. Oh, she says, oh, it's warm. Okay. All right, do you profess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then um, I'll close this in prayer if there's no one else that wants to be baptized. Amen. Can we just all just stand on this last worship song? 
and let's bring the house, house lights down and let's just sing out to him this morning. Amen. All right, Melissa. some good news for you. Maybe you just wanted to, but you couldn't quite figure it out. You couldn't quite do it. I have got great news for you. We have one more service to do today. So maybe you want to run home and get some clothes to change into and come back for the second service to do that. Uh, But can we just praise the Lord um, for, for a new beginning of life today with these three people that were baptized this morning. We do have more that are being baptized in the second service. And if you want to be baptized today and you just want to change of clothes, run home and get a change of clothes and just get back in time uh, to do that. Our second service starts at 1045 this morning. Hey, I love you guys so much. It is a privilege and an honor to be your pastor and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He willingly gave his life on that cross, 
gave his body and his blood so that you could be forgiven and that you um, are eternally saved with our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. I thank you for these men and women that were baptized this morning and that are going to be baptized here in a little while. And be with them as, man, we know that when we step, take one step closer to you, then Satan tries as hard as he can to drive us away. So man, I just pray for those that were baptized this morning that they will surround themselves with Christ followers to help them with their walk, help them with their path. I pray for each and every person here this morning that they would do the same thing, that they would be witnesses for you and share in their circle of influence the glory and the power and the almighty love of our heavenly Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's children said, amen. You guys have a blessed week.